Well, Ho Shoreline Church, I hope that you enjoyed your eight weeks of Organic Disciples devotionals. We are now back to the book of James, and this is your devotional for March 2nd. Uh, and I hope that this is an encouragement. We're going to step back into the topic of, of our lives, about wisdom, faith, and works, the power of our words, some amazing topics in these coming weeks. And so today we're looking at James chapter 2, verses 18 to 26. It's one of the longer passages we're going to read, but just let God speak to you and think about our faith and how our faith impacts our lives and impacts our actions, our faith and our works, our faith and deeds. We'll begin in verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there's one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? When he offered his son Isaac on the altar, you see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, Was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them out in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Now this passage uh, was a challenging passage for Martin Luther, one of the great reformers. Uh, Matter of fact, Martin Luther didn't like the book of James very much because of this whole discussion. Because his big cry was faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. Here's where we have to get over the confusing part. James is not saying that we're saved by our deeds, by our actions, by our good works. He is not saying that. Here's what he's saying. When we are truly saved, when we've come to faith in Jesus, it will change us. We won't look the same. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen rapid speed. It may take weeks, months, and years as the Spirit's transforming us. But, but here's the big theme that we need to hear in this portion of Scripture. If you say, if you say I have faith, but it doesn't change my life, it would like, be like me saying, I love my wife, Sherry. I mean, I don't talk to her. I'm not very nice to her. I'm kind of you know, grouchy all the time, and I, I don't really like being around her, but I tell you, I love her. you got to believe it. It's like, well, that's a lot of talk, but if, if you watched me for a week and you saw me care for my wife, listen to my wife, show compassion to my wife, show tenderness. I wouldn't have to tell you I love her. You would say he loves her. That's what James is getting at here. Uh, our, Our faith saves us. It is saving faith. We're saved by faith alone. But when we're saved by faith through the grace of Jesus, our deeds, our actions, our lifestyles change. We, we don't do good things for God to love us. While we were still sinners, Romans says, Christ died for us. But once we know His love and we know His grace, it changes our lives. So walk with deep faith and let your actions show that your faith is real. Let them become a witness to the world. Let your faith be real and let the world see. I want to pray for you that you would walk in faith and works revealing the presence of Jesus. Lord, this is our prayer, that we would walk with deep, growing, abiding faith, faith in you, faith that is confident in your goodness and your power and your life and death and resurrection. But Lord, let that faith change our lives. So when people see how we live, they will say, oh, they love Jesus. Look at how they live. I see Jesus in them. Lord, let let us become more and more like you, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of the week, and we will see you at Shoreline Church for worship outdoors in the courtyard. It's beautiful if you need some space, but you want to gather on campus to worship indoors in the worship center. More and more folks are joining us indoors and online. It's all there for you. And even the family worship venue with spaces for each family that wants to worship together as a family. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week.